We still have some band-aid repairs to take care of on Project Little Fairmont. Check it out. Welcome to Straight Six Fan. I'm Grant Tommy, helping you build your hot rod and your confidence without a ton of money. And it is part two today of Health by a Thousand Band-Aids. Um, we've just got some other little ticky tack things to take care of to see if that's going to improve our chances upon next startup. Um, so before we get into what we're working on today, let me give you a little bit of a rewind as to what we took care of since the last Wednesday upload. As I mentioned at the end of last week's episode, I was going to put the car up on jack stands because the collector was tacked into place previously on my Y pipe. And as a result, it was kind of cocked towards the drive shaft. And so that means my exhaust pipe was not going to run very straight uh, with it like that. And the, the point here was that uh, some people were commenting that, hey, a little back pressure with the muffler on might, might help my, my tuning capabilities. Uh, in the near future. From there, I ran a string line, pulling it off of the intersection of the Y, and pulled it straight back, and then measured it off of a straight edge of the bottom of the floor plan. This then allowed me to make a mark uh, following the string line with a yellow marker pin, and then before I yanked it off, I took a, a square and ran a straight line to the same intersection point perpendicular to the collector pipe. That brings you up to speed on what I did on Friday of this week. So then yesterday, Saturday, with the Y pipe off the car, I took the collector off and I cut down the Y pipe even shorter than what it previously was. But because of my two marks, my green and my yellow line, I was able to then line up the chunk of the yellow line on the Y pipe with the straight line of the green. And this got me exactly where I wanted. So then Saturday, I was able to TIG weld up the rest of the collector and the white pipe. It's exactly where I want it. I even mocked it up once. I retacked it into place and mocked it up once. Liked where it ended up. So we went ahead and fully welded that in yesterday. So that brings me up to today. So here we are Sunday. Before I get the white pipe back up under the car for uh, what I hope to be final time, um, well, now it's a good time to pull the driver's side header. Uh, this is the downside with these GT40P heads and spark plug angle conflict. You just can't really get to cylinder seven and eight without taking the header off. Um, so with all of the gas that had been flooded in the motor, um, I'm gonna go back to the, the first set of plugs I had in the car, which lasted two startup attempts and thought maybe they were gas fouled. Really, when I pulled them off, they didn't look that bad. I'm guessing because this one ran a couple times, and how rich it was running. I'm guessing we have some foul plugs. Let's go around, so we're gonna swap those out. There's another Band-Aid fix here we're going to do on Project Low Fairmont in hopes of really improving our chances of a good running car for the next startup. Lucky for the passenger side, we can get all the plugs out without having to remove this header. Uh, however, you have to get a little creative at times with the uh, boxed-in ratchet wrench and the, uh, the socket. Uh, but hey, it's um, it's better than yanking the header off here on this one, and then this is cylinder. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> wow. Okay. This is cylinder number four. This is the one that gets the most gas dumped in it. We've found historically, and I'd say yes. This is probably a, a sign of running super rich and um, something that needs to come out. As a comparison, the uh, there's the plug from the first two startup attempts. So yeah, uh, much better odds with this guy.
all four of the passenger side pulled out. And uh, yeah, worthwhile task here for <laughs> some more Band-Aid fixes. Now, I don't think outside of the thumbnail did last week you see the carburetor installed. Um, I did have to use the thicker spacer provided in my rebuild kit um, in order to prop up that dual stage um, enrichment valve. And you can see down there, maybe, if you can, I also had to shave off the top of the EGR plate. Um, that little silver thing down there, I'll try to get it focused back, um, just to provide enough clearance for that uh, enrichment valve vacuum line nipple uh, to go there. But anyway, so that's on. The only thing I forgot to do before I slapped everything on is I should have filled the fuel bowl up with a little bit of gas, um, but I'm gonna, so I'm gonna have to do that before the next startup, but no big deal. Okay, so cylinder six and eight, you can take off with the header still on. Five would not be impossible, um, but because seven is the pain in the arse, um, and I have to take the headers off anyway, I'm just gonna do five and seven together. I already did six and eight. Same condition as the other side. I did hand crank over the car with the passenger side. Um, plugs all pulled, no gas came out, so I don't feel like it's an exercise I need to do here on the driver's side. Um, but anyway, gotta, gotta yank off the, uh, the header now. Are in driver's side header is back on, and um, I guess we're kind of caught up. And there's only well, now I need to go underneath the car and get the uh, the pipe extension and the muffler hooked up. But I need to make a run to the parts store so I can get some uh, yeah, exhaust clamps, exhaust hanger for the back to, to support the back of the muffler, and um, I also need to get some vacuum plugs for these two vacuum ports. Of course, I snapped uh, some prongs off trying to take vacuum lines off but these are these temperature operated uh, um, controls for the for vacuum and uh, I don't need these anymore so I need these blocked off and then one other thing that I uh, changed since the last episode and again if you missed part one to a thousand band-aids for healing that's up over here so go check that out to kind of get caught up maybe it fills in some blanks fills in some context for you here on this episode, but um, since then, a new subscriber of mine recommended I look at switching over my vacuum advance on my distributor to ported vacuum from Manifold Vacuum. Uh, that subscriber out in the country, I'll leave an info card up over here so you can check out his channel, but um, you know, as he encouraged me to do that, I, I kind of double checked with the Thunderhead 289 video, which kind of spoke to the same for street and mild cam applications or stock cam applications like is the case with Project Mode Fairmont, um, ported vacuum is going to be a little better uh, opportunity. So this would all make sense if I was dumping way too much fuel into the car. No timing advance was ever going to overcome that and so I think the majority of my problems are going to be solved with the carburetor that power valve uh, changing out. So. I'm excited to, to fire this up one more time and, and see how it runs, and if it, if it runs well, I'm instantly going to drain the oil, which is gas soaked right now. Oh, oh, one other thing. I picked up this battery charger, and so we got the battery charged back up on Project Low Fairmont. I had this sitting on there last night overnight, and so it should be ready to, to fire up. Uh, but anyway, let me, let me get that exhaust back on and let's wrap up this episode.
Okay, so let's recap from parts one and part two where we've come for a thousand band-aids. Okay, so there's really more like five or six. We, um, we took a look at the carburetor, figured out that enrichment valve definitely was junk, and so that's why we're dumping way too much fuel into it. We eliminated the smog pump, we eliminated the EGR, uh, we blocked off the EGR plate, and then we looked at uh, welding in the collector on the Y-pipe so we can run a muffler for the next start up and we uh we switched out spark plugs um so there we go that's it's five five different things and um waiting on still i got you know i could have gone in this past week to o'reilly's and got some of those intake plugs but I'm really trying to eliminate exposure to anybody last week leading up to thanksgiving so i could go see my family had a great time down there as well i hope you guys did as well for a um whatever you did for thanksgiving you know, we're starting that whole holiday season thing. So, speaking of holiday seasons, uh, just know, Car Guy and Six Fan, we will do a holiday special at some point. So, be looking for that. I'm um, not sure whose channel is going to host it at this point, but if you don't know what I'm talking about when I say Car Guy and Six Fan show, well, I'll leave an info card up over here to our previous season, season four live stream. Had a lot of guests, had a lot of interviews, good content there. Um, I think you guys, at the very least, go check out the last one, Vice Grip Garage. That seems to be a pretty wildly popular interview, but we had a lot of great hosts or guests in season four. So season five starts up just after the new year. We'll be there, I think, the first or second Thursday of the month. Anyway, enough about that. We're in definitely in shape. Probably next week's upload, you'll see this starting an, another startup attempt again. Um, but otherwise, that's going to do it for this episode. Like comment, share, subscribe. If you want to figure out how we got to this point on Project Low Fairmont, I'll leave some videos over here for you to check out. That's going to do it for this episode. Until next time, peace out. We still have some band-aid repairs to 